Pishig, Ambassador, our son Arbarty, Augustar Mohunfin, Augustar Winter, Dinim Chovron, Le Winter and Franca, Lesh Nadinia for Boss, August Nadinia Tog Gortaha, August Aglana, Davar on Unsi, Fiechfer, Faregenach, Ahala Ihe Dehine, Shakata. An Akra Ufasakshaw and Downer Fad, Agus Ganaris Muinter Naherden. Unsi er Hiviltocht, Agus Arna Kerta Dene is Bonusi at Alguin. Kahamid Ain to La Pobel Nefranke, Agus and Downer Fad, Hononunsi Shaw Achoina, Agus Stop Achorlesh. Dinioga Egdausa, Egeshtok Lakiol, Egehe. Ich bin Tanav Asen Sail, ich fechen der Chlehe. Na gena im Achti an Tiel, a Dun Variach. Aspe Shiviltochte, agus Aspe Denochte, a ta a Grilor Isis. Ni fede le Hendene, e Shene Hene, nu ein Leschgel a Gawail. Tishik, on behalf of my own party and on my own behalf, an Ambassador. We extend our sincere sympathies to the families of all those who have been bereaved, to the families of all those who have been injured and to those injured, and to the people of France uh, as a result of the savage and barbarous attack last Friday evening. It was a savage attack on our way of life and on our civilization. It also uh, was an extraordinary trauma for those who are in the, th the theatres, in the restaurants, uh, and outside the stadium. As eloquently articulated last evening on the nine o'clock news by Katie Healy, Healy, as she detailed her experiences in the Bataclan, uh, how the foot of the terrorist uh, was uh, literally walking by her, how she said goodbye to her boyfriend, um, David Nolan. Uh, and one gets a sense of the extraordinary fear, anxiety, terror that must have been going through the people uh, in uh, listening to the music in the <laughs> restaurants and on the streets um, of France. The sheer terror perpetrated by these people. There will be unspeakable, there is unspeakable grief and there will be unspeakable grief ahead. There will be many funerals in the weeks ahead. Many families in mourning because of the savagery and barbarity of ISIS. 129 murdered and 352 people um, injured. And let us be very clear, there is an absence of civilization at the very heart of ISIS. And remember this atrocity is following a significant long line of atrocities now. 224 holidaymakers murdered as they travelled home to Russia on a plane in recent weeks. Irish and British people shot at and murdered on the beaches of Tunisia. Essentially, the international order as we know it is being challenged in an unprecedented way, beyond anything we have ever experienced. The scale and the random nature of these attacks create a vulnerability and understandable fear and anxiety amongst our peoples. It's worth reflecting that the atrocity last Friday killed people spanning three continents involving over 12 countries. We stand united with the people of France, the people of Europe and across the world in solidarity because we share common values, basic everyday freedoms that we cannot and will not ever compromise on. ISIS attacked the very cradle of civilization as we know it, an iconic cradle of the values we cherish, of equality, of freedom, of fraternity. But we must respond in an intelligent way. We must first of all seek to understand the enemy, the underlying issues, the factors in order to defeat it. And one element that's extremely important 
and that requires further debate is the whole issue of intelligence capacity. It seems to me in the modern era, intelligence capacity is a key tool in terms of defeating ISIS and combating this form of extreme terrorism. The debate so far has been too one-sided in terms of, of the issues that have been articulated. I genuinely say that, Taoiseach, and we need to have that debate here and across Europe. Because it is the most effective tool that we have to protect our citizens and to prevent atrocities such as this. Indeed, as a former Minister for Foreign Affairs, I know and was briefed on a number of occasions how many OMA-type bombing bombs on the scale twice the size of the OMA bomb were averted through good intelligence capacity, through the sharing of information between police forces, between the PSNI and on Gorda Shikana. So at European level, there has to be absolute sharing of data and intelligence. No holding back. There is no alternative in terms of, of dealing with this threat and protecting our citizens. Because the technological revolution, the internet revolution, has changed the methodology, the modalities, and the communication strategies of extreme terrorists. And states have to respond with an understanding of that revolution and have to combat like with like. I believe there should be a convening of the United Nations Security Council to respond and to ensure an international response under the UN framework to the barbarity of ISIS's attack on France and its people. There also has to be an intelligent geopolitical response. There is no doubt that the weakening and dismantling of Libya, the hated regime as it was, of Syria and Iraq has created a terrible vacuum which has led to the rise of ISIS and emerged to the critical mass that ISIS now represents across this terrain. And that, that, that means we must learn lessons from the past, but it must also inform how we deal with this. And in particular, in terms of how we respond to the Syrian crisis and that the peace talks that are underway have now assumed a greater urgency. And it needs wise heads who will prioritize the issues to ensure, in the first instance, the protection of our citizens and our peoples. And that's extremely important. Because we must be very clear, ISIS and the ideologues in ISIS in particular have declared war on our civilization, <coughs> on our way of life, our values, and our people, by word and by deed. They seek to polarize the world, to create mayhem, chaos, fear, fear and anxiety. And they've written this. And through that, to engineer change among Europeans and Democrats, vis-a-vis -vis our values and principles. They want us in Europe to become more repressive, more intolerant, more exclusive and introverted as a people and as a society. We follow that path and we play into the ISIS agenda. Multiculturalism, religious freedom are core values. We cannot abandon them. Neither can we tar, tar everyone with the one brush. The Muslim faith is a faith of peace and compassion and truth. The vast majority, the vast, vast majority of Muslims throughout the world are horrified and appalled with what has happened. These extremists are anathema to them. We know only too well in Ireland what can emerge, what can happen, what injustices can follow if we attempt to tar people with the one, one brush, and we cannot do that. We must also, Taoiseach, look at our own capacities in the light of this atrocity. Given the enormity of what has happened, we must re-examine re our own capacities to deal with such atrocities and how we link in with our European colleagues. Our intelligence capacity, our capacity to respond to threats such as this and to events such as this. 
the Cabinet Security Subcommittee and its meetings and so on. And I would appreciate, Taoiseach, at some stage, uh, if a comprehensive statement uh, could be issued on that, insofar as is commensurate with, with intelligence and security advice, uh, and that the leaders of the opposition and others would be uh, so briefed on those threats. Because without question, what has transpired has shaken people to the core, uh, and it represents an appalling attack on our civilization. We stand with the government and with all parties in this House in uniting in sympathy uh, with the French people on the appalling death that has come to their land. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, David.